Hello there students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Chemistry 300 series. The properties and structures of matter is our first module and this is video number six, classifying elements based on their chemical properties. In the previous video, we started to look at how elements were classified on the basis of being metals, uh, semi-metals or metalloids or non-metals on the basis of their physical properties. And hopefully now you've had an opportunity uh, to work through some of the different ways in which those properties can express themselves in different elements and how we can group the elements together based on those properties. But the other thing that's very important is how elements behave in chemical reactions. So chemical properties are based on their reaction or reactivity. Now, reactivity is a good word because we notice that there's some patterns of reactivity um, in terms of uh, elements becoming more reactive in terms of metals as we go down the periodic table. Sometimes that reactivity increases for things like nonmetals, so metals increasing as we go down and nonmetals, uh, generally speaking, increasing as we go up. But that's just a very simple um, generalization. We can also look at how the elements react with water. Very common substance, obviously, on Earth. So how elements interact with water is very important. And another very important substance, very common substance on the Earth is oxygen. And how different substances react with oxygen can also tell us something about them. Uh, water is an interesting one because we can have uh, substances which can be soluble, that is, they'll dissolve in water, or they can be insoluble, that is, they do not dissolve in water. Both of these tend to be more about their physical uh, properties, but of course they can also react with water. And we've seen some fairly um, significant reactions involving particularly the group one metals uh, with water, although sadly most of the time now you've probably seen that on a video rather than live. I want to talk about them in the next slide, so I'll leave that just for the time being. And we will come and have a look at the reaction with oxygen um, in one of the upcoming um, videos in this series, because the different ways in which elements react with oxygen is also a very important indicator um, in terms of the chemical properties of the different types of elements. This just gives you a little bit of an idea about the different ways in which we can classify elements based on how they behave in chemical reactions. But let's look at something in a little bit more detail. The first thing that we notice is that a lot of the nonmetals, when we place them in water, for example, uh, may dissolve. Uh, they may um, uh, be insoluble. They don't usually react. There may, under circumstance, some circumstances, be a reaction, but we don't tend to see any violent reactions. On the other hand, when we put metals in water, we do. The water has um, hydrogen. Uh, this is the water molecule, which we can also write in this way hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion, and often what happens is we get a type of reaction called a displacement reaction, and we will look at these in a little bit more detail later on. Suffice it to say that fairly simply, um, the metal will actually push the hydrogen ion out of the solution. What will happen is we'll get, um, out of the water I suppose I should say, um, what will happen is we'll get hydrogen gas being produced, and we'll get the metal hydroxide as a salt being formed. The other thing that we notice is as we look through the list of alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, if you're brave enough to go down that far, um, we see increasing activity. Um, so as we go down, we see increasing activity with water. Now we know that there's a lot of energy generated. These are what we call exothermic reactions. They produce energy. Energy. Uh, and this production of energy can actually lead to the explosion of the hydrogen gas. And you may see 
that there are occasions where that extra heat and the production of hydrogen gas together create a little explosion when we put in a uh, piece of alkali metal into some water. But we'll have a look at these in a little bit more detail, hopefully in the classroom. Thanks for watching.